Hello there Aquarius, welcome to your tarot reading. So I want to start out by wishing you all a very, very happy birthday and um, I wish you a lot of blessings, happiness and joy for this new solar uh, return cycle, all right? Um, let's go into your reading. Once again, I am using the 12 houses of the NATO astrology chart. So let's just see what energies are coming through for you guys for each house as it pertains to a specific sector in your life right now. Um, one of the first thing I am getting here is that um, I feel like for this month, the energy is heavily about you trying to work together with another person, like trying to work together as a unit, trying to find ways to compromise and trying to find ways to like you and another person meeting each other halfway. And, um, you know, as the most independent sign of the Zodiac, it's going to be a little bit challenging for you because you are very much your own person and you, you pride yourself on being extremely independent and um, extremely, you know, as well, like you want, you, you care about mobility, you care about, you know, your ability to just uh, voice your opinions and to behave in a way that is unencumbered by other people's expectations. So the challenge for this month, honestly, is going to be um, working together with other people. And it's not always just, you know, relationships. It can be people in your environment where you're going to have to learn to work together as a unit. So right off the bat, the energy that you're projecting here is the magician in the reverse position. A lot of the times this basically indicates, you know, the, the speech, the ways in which we can convince others to come on board with um, our ideas, the ways in which we have to like somehow um, withhold the truth or distort the truth in order to present a specific situation, in order to present a case. And a lot of the times, as it relates to communication, this card also means, you know, uh, deception. It can also mean um, not being able to speak our truth in a way that we want. So there is some external constraints, basically, on your ideas, on the way that you uh, project yourself into the world. There might be some blockages um, when it comes to, you know, higher ups not being receptive to what you have to say. So you feel a little bit as if your energy is uh, either uh, sapped or the things that you're hoping to implement into the world are not being uh, received in the way that you'd hope. So there is some type of stall communication, some type of stall implementation of new projects as well. And um, with the magician in the reverse position, this is a card about learning. This is a card about mastery of you know specific skills and as well as mastery of our emotions, our head, and our faculties. And when it shows up in the reverse position, they're urging you, you know, honestly, are there certain things that you might not have full knowledge about? If yes, maybe it's time to, you know, go back and review. Maybe it's time to do a little bit more research a little bit more analysis, read up on a specific topic so that you can become the master and that you can deliver the message so that you can deliver, um, you know, your expert opinion in a way where it actually validates, you know, your, it, it validates your, your worth, but it also validates whatever it is that you are a master of. Okay. So it's kind of like, where do we need to increase or you know enhance our credibility as it pertains to other people that we're dealing with so i do feel that you know this is a, a card that's urging you to master some some specific skills so that you can achieve greatness in the world um, as it relates to your second house here we do have the justice card in the reverse position so the second house deals with income and with the justice card in the reverse position a lot of you might be in you know legal uh, disputes a lot of you might be uh, in a work environment where you feel almost as if, hey, I'm doing a lot of the work, but for some reason, my compensation is not uh, exactly, you know, what I feel that I'm worth. So with the this card as a major arcana card showing up in the reverse position as well, they're pretty much urging you to right a wrong. They're pretty much urging you to, you know, really think about um, the job that you're doing, the work that you, you're doing as well as how you're able to make your income and to figure out if there is a way you can ask for a salary, if there's a way, a salary increase, if there's a way that you can even, 
you know, apply for new promotions? And where are you selling yourself short when it comes to, you know, how much you feel that you are worth? So the justice card, once again, this is pretty much about um, imbalances. And in your finance sector, there are pretty much imbalances as well as it pertains to, you know, monetary gains, what's coming in, what's leaving. So be a little bit careful about, you know, frivolous spending for this month. Be a little bit more careful about, you, you know, like decisions that were made regarding finances that are not well thought out. So this, these two areas in your chart, it basically means that, you know, you, you might like um, see, see the wrong sense of worth in something and you might need to to look at this situation further in order to figure out you know where are you spending your money as well as what your long-term goals are so i feel like putting away money in a uh, savings account would actually be really really good for you if you haven't started that it's a good time for you to start planning that and start thinking about that because i feel like you know money might be um siphoned in the wrong avenues okay so third house communication, we do have here the 10 of cups in the reverse position linked up here with the magician. It's situations where emotionally speaking, you might not be able to communicate your thoughts in a um, succinct way. So it might be, you know, emotions overriding logic where you are emotionally worked up, either, um, you know, feeling very emotionally elated and then you're not able to think in a coherent way and you're not able to verbalize yourself in a coherent way. So both of these things go hand in hand where I do feel, you know, burst of angers and um, Aquarius don't get mad very easily and they make a lot of allowances for people overall. You know, you make justifications and you, if someone uh, approached you the wrong way, oftentimes you're like, you make allowances for them. You say it to yourself that you might justify it as, oh, he or she probably had a bad day. But I feel like this is a, a card in which you're not able to emo, uh, to communicate well, mainly because you are emotionally worked up or you are emotionally disappointed at a person and you might not be able to speak to them in a manner that is rational. It's more like on the emotional front. So be very careful about communication. And I feel like, you know, this is an ongoing thing. And I do sense as well that you want to tone down the communication at the same time. In a professional environment, we're supposed to be very, very neutral, right? We have to train ourselves to conduct ourselves in a way where we are very objective, very platonic. So it would behoove you to try to, you know, cultivate this type of a persona where you're not letting your emotions uh, run, run amok and you're able to communicate despite these emotional, you know, difficulties. Okay, so aiming for a little bit more, and this is not something that I feel, you know, it's uh, problems for you in other, in other months, but I feel like for this month, it could just be um, your feelings getting the best of you. So take a breath, uh, you know, take a breather, take a deep breath, and before you really feel the need to say something, just ask yourself if it's contributing value, if it's going to change the situation for the better before you say it, okay? So aim to detach a little bit emotionally from your speech. I feel that's going to be beneficial for you. Now, the fourth house is uh, family. We have here the Page of Cups, and this is a person, water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, Sun, Moon, or Rising. This is somebody in your midst that you're either sharing space with or dealing with, you know, on an everyday basis. And they could also be a member of your family or even um, a person that you are, you know, sharing quarters with, for example. Um, so this is a person that wants a lot of activity. You know, they need a lot of stimulation. They might want to go out a lot and they might be like, let's go here, let's go there. So I feel like the, you've got somebody in your um mist who's either offering you a lot of food a lot of drinks or even opportunities to get a lot of food to go out to go dining or even you know to get drinks so in the mundane uh, on the mundane terms they might just be you know bringing a lot of gifts and I, I feel like food beverage and then in other ways i do feel like um you are dealing with a person specifically um, that might want, and it's linked up here with the Ten of Cups, that might want to create a family with you, that might want a relationship with you, and that, that might want, you know, like uh, more commitment from you. So I feel like this is an energy coming through from a person that is potentially a water sign, and they want to build a family. They're, they're working at building a family, a home life with you. 
Um, fifth house here, we do have the Three of Cups. And this is a very, very good card about, you know, jovial energy, having fun, social dating, social flirtation as well. Falling in your fifth house, which is the house of fun, excitement, recreation, creativity. It's a very, very good card, which basically denotes that there will be ample opportunities to meet up with friends, to meet up with like, um, this isn't just an acquaintance card. This is a card about having emotional connections to the people that you're with. So, you know, like meeting up with your best friend, having a really good, you know, either a girl's night out, guy's night out, and having just a really, really good time where you feel appreciated, where you feel like you have a very strong emotional connection with the people that you're going out with or dating. So it's a great card it's for singles who are looking. It's a great card for dating. And they're urging you that there will be many, many dates happening for um, my Aquarius for this month. So it's a very good card. And I usually think of this card as like reconnecting with best friends, reconnecting with people that you have a very strong emotional bond with, okay? In terms of your uh, creativity, the Three of Cups is a very good card, which basically means that, you know, conversations, laughter, um, you know, like a more of a lighthearted energy is really going to jumpstart your creativity. For those of you who are, you know, either uh, in any type of a creative venture, um, you might have been blocked. So they're pretty much urging you that getting out there, getting your mind off of it, I feel that it's going to bring in a spark of energy. It's going to clear up those blockages for you. And it's also going to give you a better idea as to, you know, which direction you need to head. So I feel like a lot of you are waiting on people. And um, it's a very other oriented type of month. And I feel that you're waiting on people and you're waiting on decisions from other people where do we go? What time do we meet up? You know, working out the logistics behind going out. And I do sense that it's going to be a little bit taxing for you guys because you're very, very independent. But I feel like you're making time for the people that are worth it, which is a great thing. So you're not going to be too alone this um, this time of year and especially for this month. OK, there are a lot of um, outdoor activities, even social engagements that you must attend. And in the process of t attending these social engagements, I feel I feel like they are work related and also friendships related. OK, so it looks good. Um, sixth house deals with work. We have here the Ace of Pentacles, which indicates to me brand new projects. OK, brand new clients, brand new pro projects, brand new prospects that are made available for you. Um, usually when I see this card, I, I think of it as like, you know, landing a, a really good client and then starting to build the rapport with the client. This is also like brand new projects that are emerging. And, you know, somebody's like, hey, we have this brand new project uh, happening. Do you want to be on board? And so you can decide to turn it down or you can decide to go with it. So overall, it looks very, very good. And if for some of you, if you've been stalled in January, you know, if you've been putting in a lot of work in a situation and you're not seeing any end results. I do feel that work on the work sector, things are going to start to clear up. And I feel that it's going to be happening through, um, you know, professional networking, social media networking comes up too often with this card. And especially for those of you who are dealing with any type of publishing, um, I do feel that coming in for you as well in the work front. So publishing, meeting up with people, linking up, as well as uh, having new opportunities relate, related to creativity, writing, um, you know, even like funding, research, grants, and things like that. Um, your mind is going to be very sharp. And I do feel that, you know, um, even like creative blocks or even writer's blocks, those things are going to clear up for you. Um, the other thing I want to mention as well is um, I feel like some of you are going to be coming into contact with heavily with co-workers there is for those who are single well single or attached there's a lot of flirtation there's a lot of chemistry on the work front okay so um it's available for you as well and i feel that you know you shouldn't mix business with pleasure but things happen um it's a very good card for flirtation you know office romance flirtation and i feel like even you know a lot of chemistry attraction to another person in the work front, okay? Seventh house deals with relationship, and we have the star here. And the star is a card about immense healing. It's about wish fulfillment. And it's actually about, you know, feeling very, very good, feeling spiritually uplifted, 
feeling spiritually realigned because I feel many of you have a relationship partner in the, the mix, okay? So if you are in a relationship, I do feel that you're going to feel, you're going to have better sense of where the direction, is, uh, the relationship is headed, which direction the relationship is headed. You're going to um, be showered with a lot of love and affection this month where you start to, you know, whatever hangups you've had from previous relationships, I feel like you're going to be able to heal from it, okay? So it's a very good card. It's a very positive card. It's also your card. It's a card of Aquarius, the water bearer. This is, um, the other thing that shows up with this card here is, um, I feel like some of you might have felt, you know, kind of like alone, okay? So if you're single right now, you feel almost as if you've struggled through a lot in past relationships. And you feel like you couldn't really affect the outcome. You couldn't really conjure, manifest um, relationships. And I do sense as well, there might have been some disappointment or dealing with people that might have been a little bit more, you know, devious, manipulative, controlling, things like that. And I do sense that you're going to be able to heal from those past relationships, okay, for this month. Because the energy that um, the, the, the work environment and your friends and associates are bringing in, it's restoring your faith in your self-worth. It's restoring your faith in yourself as well as how you see yourself. So there's a lot of healing taking place. Others of you who are dealing specifically, you know, with uh, an Aquarius. So I do sense there's going to be a renewal, some type of wish fulfillment, feeling very loved and appreciated by this person. So if you're dealing with another Aquarius... Um, this is a card of Aquarius here landing in your relationship house. So uh, I'm inclined to say that either way, it's going to be, a, there's, there will be a lot of reciprocity. Um, moving forward, eighth house, joint finances. For the sake of this reading, let's do joint finances. I feel like some of you are joined up financially with a water sign. So this is a Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, Sun, Moon, or Rising. You might be sharing living expenses. You might be sharing bank accounts. You might talk heavily about, you know, financial planning with this person. When it shows up in the reverse position, this is not somebody who makes, you know, practical decisions based on finances. This is also somebody that, that, that might, you know, they, they, they might feel a little bit entitled to your money. So, for example, if you're pooling resources together, they might feel like, oh, you know, What's mine is mine, and what's, uh, what's yours is also mine. So it, there's a little bit of uh, unfairness here, rebalancing that needs to happen in your finance sector, and especially if you are linked up financially with a water sign, okay? Something to keep in mind about, because like I said, the, the, the main focus of these readings is to touch on area, all areas of our lives and to see which areas are a little bit troublesome or a little bit weak because the problems are going to start to exacerbate if they're not taken care of early on. So for February, I feel like your financial sector, as it relates to another person, it needs to be re-examined. It needs to be squared away and it needs to be um, readjusted in a way where it's fair for both parties because I feel like you're dealing with some type of a financial, the brunt of the financial responsibilities and the other person is not shouldering the weight or not putting in, chipping in their fair share. So I feel like that's what's happening here. Um, ninth house, education, travel. We have here the two of cups. And the two of cups here is basically, as it relates to um, education, this is a situation where we feel like, you know, hey, I've attained that diploma. I've attained that, um, you know, certificate. I've graduated. Why am I not able to find the, the types of job that I want? And so I do sense for some of you, you're either thinking about, you know, like you're, you're having some type of intense um, readjustment period or, you know, rethinking whether or not you want to continue a course of uh, schoolwork or you have recently graduated and uh, the, the work environment, you know, might not have been very welcoming. So, you know, the, just the job market might not have been very um, robust so it, it was, might have been very difficult for you to find work. You might have no trouble finding just work, but in terms of like your career, 
you might feel almost as if you're staying up very late trying to you know find the right jobs trying to see what's available trying to be the first person to apply for a job and you feel that like you, you, i feel like you you sense that despite all the education why am i not landing the jobs that i'm meant for you know why am i not able to find jobs that really stirs my passion so in terms of long distance travel i feel like some of you are trepidatious like hesitant about taking some type of a long distance trip because it basically means that you know you you might not be able to be close to your partner your significant other so there's something here about you know taking a trip um planning a trip taking a trip two people not being on the same page either you know working out the logistic dates when we leave when we get back things like that as well as um want, like feeling hesitant about taking a trip because you know it might mean that you're not going to be away or you're not going to be in the picture with your uh with somebody that you're living with with your friends or even you know with the people that you are um you have grown up with so there's something here about taking a trip and being being very worried or not be having the opportunities to do that okay what i'm also getting as well is um with your career sector the career sector is a uh, 10th house which is represented here by the 9 of swords and the 9 of swords is a card about you know anxiousness it's a card about restlessness it's also a card about a little bit of sadness grief and sorrow um as it relates to career prospects i feel some of you are in jobs where you're not happy and you want to be in a different career track and you don't really know realistically the steps necessary to get there and then others of you you might be in a work situation where you feel like you don't have all the necessary skills to do the job so then you have to do extra research extra things on the side in order to get it in order to like you know understand the ins and out of your work environment and it's not leaving you enough time to do other things so you feel like you're constantly having to play catch up whereas your coworkers might already come into work the work environment with the skills necessary so there is a a situation here where we are going to have to refine our skills we're going to have to like you know figure out a way to work smarter not harder Um I do sense you know you're you're very intelligent so you're going to be able to figure this one out but they're telling you don't beat yourself up over it okay the opportunity for you to shine the opportunity for you to seek the right career I do feel that it's going to be there don't stress too much over it in the meantime focus on the everyday thing that you're doing in your work environment because you're learning skills in order for you to you know go from here where you feel almost as if I might not have all the the information to hear where you're starting new things you're starting to cultivate these skills and then gradually you will get where you need to be Gra- gradually you will get that job that is more in alignment with your education and that's going to be more in alignment with your career track okay so patience don't beat yourself up over it okay um social circle friends we have here the 10 of pentacles in the reverse position and with the 10 of pentacles in the reverse it, this is usually a card where i feel like you know having a deep rooted history with uh with another person so like your friendships you might have known them for a really really long time the the people in your friendship circle or that you consider friends when it shows up in the reverse position in your um group associations and friendships what they're saying is for you to really look at you know who it is that you're socializing with who it is that you consider friends versus who it is that have always been there for you so i feel like there's some discrepancy um between the people that you can have fun with and hang out with and just you know have a very uh lighthearted interaction with and the friends that are in your midst that you can have you know strong emotional connections with or even deep deep thoughtful insightful conversations with So they're they're telling you there's something here where you're not going to be spending so much time doing the deep reflection with another person but it's more like jovial fun energy. It doesn't indicate situations where um things are bad, but I do sense here um friendships the people you consider, you know, you're very very close friends. They might be on some financial hard times. 
um, whether or not they tell you about it, I, I, I don't feel like they're telling you. I feel like they're keeping it hidden. So you might have some friends that have fallen on financial hard times. They might have made some investments that might not have pan out for them. I do sense here as well with the Ten of Pentacles, it's kind of like, you know, the breakdown in some type of family unit. So there might be quarrel, disputes and things like that coming through from um, families of friends. They might be have, you know, um, infighting between either in-laws, between relationship partners. You're going to hear about something here. It, and especially if you have a lot of married friends or even engaged friends, um, I feel like there are some squabbles in their family life. In, in, there's some turbulence in their life over as it pertains to, you know, their family life overall. Um, the 12th house is a, a it's a very psychic house and uh, it's the house of secrets. It's a house of, you know, things that are kept hidden. Um, first of all, let me just say this. These things, these two cards speak out to me. So the 8th house is also a very psychic house. Fourth as well. The 4th house, 8th house, as well as the 12th house, okay? Um, I feel almost as if there's some some truths there's something that you are in denial about okay and um what it's saying here for you honestly is look at a person based on their actions L look at them for what they're they're they are and especially if you are sharing space with somebody or especially if you are financially linked up with them okay because i feel like you're making a lot of allowances for this person and I feel like they're not being fair to you. I feel like they're not putting in their fair share of the responsibilities of the work. And I feel like you're sharing space with this person, okay? Like physical space, like household space, things like that, you're living with them even. So I feel like you're blocking this information out because you feel like, oh, it's not that bad. But they're telling you to re-examine some things. What are some things that you're not in that you might be in denial about as it pertains to a person that you are emotionally invested in. And especially if it's showing up here as a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. How much are they chipping in versus, you know, how much are you getting out? So you want to re-examine the, the, the energy exchange, you know, like, is it fulfilling enough for you? Are you getting enough out of this? Are they just, you know, um, I guess like, um, going through some hard times or are they always just unjust or are they always just you know like um expect you to do they always just expect you to cover for them so some fairness in relationships and especially some fairness as it pertains to the household situation is um coming up for re-examination okay and especially if it deals with here uh, a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. So just something I want you to keep an eye out for because if this situation is not rectified, I feel like it can be very disappointment for you, disappointing for you. So I am going to go into your love reading now. I hope the reading has been helpful, Aquarius. So once again, the seventh house deals with relationships and it's also business partnerships as well. So Aquarius, um, the message that I got strongly from this card is they're kind of telling you, um, you need to like take care of yourself. You need to, you know, put yourself first. You need to be a little bit more decisive. Um, don't make too much allowances for, for other people. And especially when, uh, when p you're a very considerate sign and you care about justice and, and you care about justice and fairness. So for example, if you're in a group and people ask you, hey, where do you want to go eat? And you're going to, you know, crowdsource. You're going to wait for that, that vote to see where everyone wants to go. So rather than saying, hey, I like, you know, um, Thai food. I like Middle Eastern food. I like, you know, whatever it is. You might just say like, oh, I'll go wherever everyone wants to go. And they're telling you that, you know, this is uh, something where you need to really start taking care of yourself. Start putting your needs first as well. OK, and that's hard for you to do as a humanitarian type of sign. You're very other people oriented. So they really want you to focus on you, focus on self-love, focus on, you know, learning to put your needs first and as well being emotionally expressive 
if there is a situation that you're not happy with so you know um don't beat around the bush if there's a problem imbalances specifically in your relationships so once again um the star i feel like this is a really really good um month for especially those who are single so first of all the star is a, a card about wish fulfillment as it relates to your love life it's kind of like you know uh, encountering somebody that really check off those expectations that you have like everyone comes you know to dating with a list ideally you should have a list of qualities that you're looking for and you're going to meet somebody especially if you're single you're going to meet somebody that check off those lists you know that 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 check the boxes and so you're meeting someone very very close to the type of person that you um it's like your ideal type okay you're you're meeting somebody that is going to exceed your expectations and you're meeting somebody that is um quite charming, quite amazing, quite attractive as well. I know that doesn't mean everything, but it did show up here strongly because we do have the King of Pentacles here and that's like ultimately the attractive male, attractive female type. So let's just go into your reading. You've got some really good cards. Um, let's talk about the past first because I feel like this is for those of you who feel almost as if I can't love again. I've been disappointed in the past and I don't know what to do right now because I don't want the past to repeat. So f we have here the Ten of Swords and the Ten of Swords is a situation where I feel like, you know, this is a betrayal card. And a lot of the times it deals, honestly, it deals with like things that you have very, very high hopes and expectations for that didn't pan out. So it could be, you know, getting engaged to someone and and having the engagement, like the marriage just didn't happen. This can be putting your faith in the wrong person and having show you, having them, you know, uh, show their true colors. And I feel like for some of you, this is um, not something that affects you emotionally anymore. But I feel like the most recent relationship that you've had that ended I feel like it really left um, a lot of, it's, it's creating a lot of fear in you. It's creating a lot of anxiety. It's almost like walking around, you know, even if you're in a relationship right now, you're walking around wondering, where is this relationship headed? Am I secure enough? You're constantly taking stock. You're constantly like, it's almost like expecting the other person to mess up because, you know, in the past, you're just like, you had really high hopes for something in your life and it didn't go the way that you want and even now for those of you who are in a secure relationship or even if we, when you're with someone who's very very loving who's very caring you still have doubts you still you you still have to constantly take stock you're still trying to figure out like is it real so i feel like you have a little bit of uh, trouble when it comes to healing healing yourself not because you're still emotionally stuck on this person but it's more like the the damage that they did to you emotionally you thought you could trust it you thought that you know you could count on it and it turned out to be anything but so i feel like that's what happened for you and i feel like for the past two years some of you have been dealing with this two years is a long time and um, I feel here with the two of wands in the reverse position, the two of wands in the reverse position indicates stagnation, you know, not being able to move past it. And especially not being able to, um, this is a card about, you know, implementing things out in the world when it shows up in the reverse position. It's all a matter of timing. It's all a matter of like, let me just date outside of my usual type. Let me find somebody who's a little bit more worldly. Let me look outside of my geographical location so that I can find this person. It could even be, you know, culturally somebody different, or it could be just, you know, breaking out of your geographical zone when you're looking for new relationships, okay? In the foundation, the foundation is um, the situation that some of you are dealing with right now. We have here the King of Wands. This is a fire sign. So Sagittarius, Aries or Leo, um, sun, moon or rising. This is someone who's very, very much um, like very passionate. They live life to the fullest. They might be a little bit um, somewhat impulsive, but you know, very good nature, has a very contagious, infectious laugh, has a really, really good heart. 
loves animals and they they're always there when you need them it's like you know that knight in shining armor but i know that aquarius are very very independent especially the women so you're not looking for you know uh knight in shining armor or even you know the the the, the female in shining armor you're looking for somebody that can you know share life experiences with you like travel with you they're saying that a lot of you are dealing with this person so sun moon are rising this is a fire sign okay and what it's saying here is it's linked up with the ace of cups and the ace of cups is new love overflowing with joy and contentment in a love relationship if you are involved with this person they're bringing you a lot of passion and a lot of chemistry and you know you're 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 going to be feeling very appreciated by this person based on the actions the words that they use when they s speak to you based on the things that they um they want to offer you and by offer i don't mean just you know monetary offer gifts trinkets i mean like you know the ways that they make you feel i i feel like a lot of you are already in a relationship with this person and you're taking either a relationship to the next level or you're having a lot of emotional um, conversations about where the relationship is headed and I feel like it makes you feel good it makes you feel quite good um, so some of you are you know you've been through some type of missed connection or uh, bad relationships in the past past two years you might have ended two years ago you might have um, dealt with that okay and you're starting to date now and you're starting to really really like this person like there this might be the one for you so it shows up as someone who's very, very protective. And it shows up as someone who's like really spirited, you know, like great energy, great passion, great love and passion with this person. At the center of the spread is um, the central situation here. We do have the Eight of Wands as well as the Sun. The Eight of Wands, first of all, for those who are single, this is a card pertaining to you because this deals with communication. This deals with like positive communication, uplifting types of communication. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, uh, I want to say like rapid communication between you and another person back and forth. And it's really restoring your sense of attractiveness. It's restoring your sense of like confidence in yourself. So I feel like a lot of you are out there shopping for new clothes and I uh, feel like specifically dresses. And it's nice to see, um, especially Aquarius females in dresses because you know, I, I, I see more, you, I, I feel like um, more of you carry a worry about functionality of clothes like you want to be comfortable so i feel like you're dressing up high heels dresses and things like that and you're going on dates okay so this is a really really good card about going out dancing so with this combination i feel that your sense of self-esteem is being restored based on the communication that you're getting from potential suitors based on the communication that you're getting as well with uh, people that you're emotionally involved with so both of these things indicate to me um, even long term, like, you know, plans to travel with another person. And especially if it is a fire sign. So Sagittarius, Aries or Leo, Sun, Moon or Rising. And I feel like it's going to make you feel quite good. OK, um, crowning this reading and the crowning energy is something that you're thinking about. So we have here the ten of coins as well as the two of coins. First of all, the Ten of Coins in the reverse position basically indicates that um, I, I feel like some of you might be thinking about like um, finalizing divorces. Okay, so if you've already been separated, I feel like you're dividing the assets. You know, you're you've lawyered up. You're trying to divide up your uh, assets between you and another person that you were romantically linked up with or joined with financially. And I feel with the Two of Coins as well. This is a situation where things are being halved and um, you're worried about your financial situation long term as well. So while all of this is happening, you know, of course, being Aquarius that is uh, overthinks and overanalyze, I feel like there's some financial concerns that is plaguing you where you feel like you might not have enough in order to travel, in order to like give somebody in your life the life that you want. So there's something here about, you know, uh, anxieties mostly about money and anxieties about you know wanting to build a life with another person because I feel like it's tainted based on this past disappointment this past hurts 
you I, I feel like for some of you there's an element of money involved somebody might have cheated you out of money somebody might have not been fair when it comes to financial dealings and it might be somebody that you were involved with even in the work environment so you're not really sure whether or not to you know go ahead with it so there's some questions coming through for Aquarius for this month as it relates to should I or shouldn't I get involved with somebody that you know I'm um, working with professionally involved with should I get romantically involved with them and the answer here is no okay so I don't feel that it's gonna uh, go well for you and then others of you you might have been cheated like by a romantic partner either in love or even in finances and I feel like it's affecting your ability to trust another person when it comes to financial dealings with the new romantic interest in your future position we have here the king of coins as well as the seven of cups in the reverse for those of you who are um, single and dating looking around you know putting your feelers out there there is going to be this person coming through this is an earth sign Taurus Virgo Capricorn Sun Moon or rising this is somebody who's very very practical and this is somebody that wants a relationship they want a marriage they want a home and I feel like this person might have been, you know, through some type of financial difficulties or they might have recently extracted themselves financially from, you know, a, a previous family, previous relationship, previous marriage. Um, so you're dealing with someone who's like, you know, getting his uh, getting his or her financial foundation in order so that they can start dating again. And it's linked up here with the Seven of Cups. And when I see the Seven of Cups, I usually think of it as, you know, like social dating, looking at other people's online profiles, uh, making decisions about whether or not to contact them or not. So I feel that if you have this person in your midst, you, they're the ones that, it, that, um, that are t making that first move. So I feel like you're, you're dealing with someone who's very solid, very pragmatic, very financially well off as well. This can be their sun, moon, or rising. So they're at a point where they're trying to rebuild their um, empire. They're trying to rebuild their footing. They're trying to rebuild their foundation. Love relationship looks very, very good. I feel like for those of you who are dealing with legal issues, if you've been separated for like, you know, two years or something, I feel like you've already decided to um, let go. Like you've already decided to sever ties and divorce. So I feel like the, there's still lingering um, legal issues, possibly dividing assets. And I feel as well, a lot of you are just like, I'm going somewhere warmer. Like I, I see a lot of travel. And if you are traveling, I do feel that you're gonna meet somebody quite striking, handsome, beautiful, male or female, okay? Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Or you're gonna be dealing with this person um, exclusively. So rather than just, um, rather than just dealing with them, either through phone or through you know like some type of a long distance communication channel i feel like you're going to be seeing them in the flesh okay so we have some really good cards aquarius um the main theme here is healing okay healing yourself uh putting yourself first putting your needs first okay don't um don't um ask to act, don't make it so that it's so dependent on the other person you know you're not someone that does that naturally but when you fall in love you want to be fair and so you tend to ask the other person I'll do whatever you want you know like where do you want to go I'll go wherever you want make some decisions like you know exercise your free will and I do sense as well um, Aquarius overall when you verbalize your feelings you know it's um it strikes the other person like people are very curious about you and so when you let your feelings be shown, when you put your foot down, and especially when you decide on things, I, I feel that it, it will go a long way in, you know, steering the direction of your relationship because it pretty much says that you are the person in alignment, okay? So you can decide on whether or not to go ahead with the relationship or snuff it out before it even begins. So you're pretty much in charge here. It might not seem like that when you're in a relationship, with another person and you have to take them into account but they're saying you're the one that's always going to try to be fair so you're the one in charge here okay i hope you enjoy your um birthday month i wish you the very best for the rest of this month okay take care of yourself i'll be back for the mid-month reading bye-bye